so I just started sewing and cutting up stuff like crazy and then I was like you know what <laughs> I need to make a video about this okay um and I've just gone a little crazy okay where are my things all right so first off went to Goodwill like I do and I literally paid $3.99 for a top sheet a pillowcase and a fitted sheet all this beautiful slightly striped will it focus yeah slightly striped um pale blue which i love this color and um, okay can you focus on me thank you <laughs> this video is all about me okay camera thank you but anyway as you can see it brings out my eyes so when i wear um blue or gray or gold it's making my eyes pop anyway that's beside the point um this just happened to be a very soft fabric um now i've recently been studying other people's tutorials and blogs and vlogs and such things of making um as much as i possibly can with the textiles that are available today for the best price um a historically accurate Tudor dress okay so I'm going to a renaissance fair my first time ever dressing up I've been to a renaissance fair one time before and it was super fun and I really loved it but um, I didn't know we were going I honestly didn't even really know what that was I had I already had my princess company but I hadn't really gotten big into cosplay yet like now so what I am doing is just cutting up a bunch of sheets I do not have a pattern um, and anyway, I don't know if you know, how do you say her name? She's so fun. Angela Clayton. Okay. Um, she is a fun YouTuber that has, you know, 7 million followers. Not really that many, but a lot. And she now makes patterns with McCall. And this is not one of her patterns, I don't think. Her, um, I think that this is the underlayer. For that so I'm trying to get the straight across across bust like that um, and I think everything else will be fairly easy I'm a little worried about the sleevage situation but I, the, the main thing is just that top part the skirt is gonna be super easy I already have a corset and a chemise um, but yeah I mean look at how fun hello so yeah, um, yeah, th but all of the, is this a different one? That top one, that's a corset underneath. Did she just put a pattern on top of it or is that a different dress? You can see her white chemise underneath sticking out the puffy white part. Well, I wish that there were a side view, but on the side, they're tied together, like in those three or four spots. So that's the kind of sleeve I'm going to try and go for, just because it's less sewing for me, and I think it'll be more fun, it'll be more difficult to get into, I believe, but we'll see. So, whew, here we go. Do, I'm just going to show you with this pillowcase. Is this a pillowcase? No, it's not. Anyway, so I'm going to bunch up the skirt and then I'm going to have it open in the middle there will be like a little slit for a different piece of material so I have this old skirt it's an I think it used to be for Cinderella costume um, I used to use it underneath my Cinderella costume for more body before I had a proper um, cage underneath but anyway I got this at a yard sale <laughs> um, and typically I do not like the shiny look because it looks very synthetic and fake and um, nobody likes that but I think that it would be a good peek through for this color fabric to be underneath and yeah so and that'll also help with the fullness of my Tudor skirt dress what are we gonna call it anyway progress so far, I've got the undergarments down. Unfortunately, that does not really matter as much <laughs> to anyone but me. But anyway, I'm going to continue sewing. 
Hopefully I will have the skirt and possibly the detachable sleeves finished by this evening because today is Tuesday. It is 5.20 and um, I need this done before Sunday morning and I work Friday night and Saturday all day. Oh, and I'm babysitting for my sister on Thursday. All the things are happening. So I basically have a day and a half to get this finished um, for the most part. So wish me luck. Okay, so I have finished the skirt and I'm pretty happy with it. I still need to iron it and make sure things go into place. But I have on, whoa, they're intertwined. Okay, so I have on this and then I'm gonna put this on top of it. Gotta go over the head. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna angle you down so you can see better. So, this is what we have so far. It's about this high off the ground. I'll show you the full length in a moment. And then we have this, is what I've just sewn with the open but I'm still gonna put it over my head okay look don't be twisting you okay hmm okay all right, hold on, I'll just show you in the mirror because it's easier. Um, maybe I do like it open more. This is probably not the skirt, I'll, the um, hoop skirt that I'll wear underneath because it's only got the one hoop, the other one fell out, so it's kind of... I feel like you can kind of tell that there's only the one hoop under there. But either way, I am very pleased with the skirt. Um, and so it doesn't drag the ground, which I'm very happy with. It might a little bit in the back, but it's okay. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with this. Okay, so here's what I'm working with. Um, I have finished making the skirt. I've made the tie-on sleeves. Now the only thing I have left to do is the top corseted part. So here's what I'm working with. I have this paper. Um, it's white on this side and then on the other side it um, has things typed on it. But granddaddy can never waste anything and this used to be, I don't know, orders for a business and he was like well the other side isn't written on so we have had this ever since he retired which was basically when I was 10 maybe <laughs> earlier than that so throughout my entire childhood we used this as paper for writing but anyway I'm gonna turn you around and show you what I'm doing here okay so here's what we've got um, I don't have pattern paper I have this paper and it is conveniently ribbed and I can make it just one sheet if I want to. Um, but this is not long enough to be my torso, um, at least not as long as I want it because I'd like to have extra fabric. So I'm going to take an extra two sheets of this and rip it off and line it up and then I'm going to trace on here with a pencil what I want the shape to be and then hopefully cut out my material with that like I'm, I'm actually making a pattern. Um, I've literally never used a pattern before. I've never created a pattern before. So we'll see what happens, okay? 
Here's take one. These look the same, right? Hello? Totally exactly the same. I'm the best pattern maker ever. <sighs> so I basically did a bunch of freehand things. I didn't record all that. And then I actually tried measuring stuff and you know, that, that worked a little better. But um, yeah, it looks terrible, but it doesn't matter. I'm not selling this. Nobody's going to see this except for the people who watch this video and me. So, um, I know the lines that I'm supposed to follow even though there are seven everywhere for each one. Um, so, but I'm just doing this part and we'll worry about that one later. So, I know they're not exact, but we'll see what happens, okay? Don't judge me. I'm working hard and following my dreams, okay? <sighs> So the second one was a lot easier to do because it's just this strange trapezoid with sleeves. Can you see it? You can't even see my tracing. Whatever, it's on there. So I'm going to cut this out and hopefully, and then I'm going to pin the paper together, you know, as if you would pin the material around your body and or... A mannequin that one so I'm gonna um yeah this one was a lot easier because it's just not as many shapes I hope this fits I didn't actually measure super great you know this is my first time and also I don't care that it's super precise it doesn't need to be perfect I'm not perfect why should my clothes be um, and you know how I feel about inside seams if I buy something from somebody and they're telling me that it's perfect then yeah but if it's just for me Nobody's going to see the inside except for myself, so I'm not really worried about perfection. So, you know, if it's something easy, like super easy that I can do to fix it, then that's great. But like, making a line a little crooked or whatever, not worried about it. So, I'm going to cut this baby out. This might actually work for me. Uh, now, the only thing is, I haven't put it on my actual body, because it's paper. Um, and even though my, um, why can't I, why can I not think of the name of it again? What is it called? Dress form. <sighs> my dress form is my size. But when I try things on that fit me, it doesn't fit the same way on the dress form. I mean, you know, bodies are different and it's like a uniform shape. But either way, so I, I don't want to put it on my dress form either <laughs> because, you know. So, um, yeah, I, I do see a little imperfection right here, honey, right here. Hold on. I'm just gonna make this armpit hole a bit deeper. Oh yeah, that's great. Let's see, is that even? That's pretty even, you can't see. <laughs> anyway, okay. 
All right, I have to say I'm extremely proud of myself. Um, this is the pillowcase that came with the sheets and I cut it open on each side and then I pinned it together at the bottom so this is two pieces of fabric. I realize the sleeves go off the top but I'm going to cut sleeves out of the sides. Um, I felt like I was okay with not worrying about the sleeves because they're probably going to be the easiest part of everything. I mean, and when I say the sleeves, I mean the straps, not this part. I'm worried about this part for sure. But anyway, um, I got it to fit on here. Uh, I'm so proud of myself. So I did a terrible job, but I did an outline with a pencil. This will be the inside. I'm going to let the other side be um, the front so I don't have to worry about the and it's a double fabric so I'm not gonna have to worry about um, the pencil not coming off and I've already pre-washed all this because obviously you got it from the thrift store but anyway so as you can see I have outlined so that is where I'm gonna cut because I'm giving myself a seam allowance and or just in case I made it too small which I do think that it'll be okay um, off camera a bit ago I did make some more adjustments. I um, I cut another half inch or so um, out of each armpit again and um, yeah we'll see what happens but I'm pretty proud of me right now so just hope the cutting process goes well. We'll see. So, I cut out the bodice fabric. It is a double layer, like I said, from the pattern I cut it out. And I went to the store and I bought two of these. They are crafting foam sheets. And I bought two of them just in case. But I went ahead and put the fabric that was... No, I didn't put the fabric because I've been sad. And scary I put the pattern onto one of the sheets and already cut it out so it's the point is a little crooked but that's okay so I really I honestly think that this is going to work as long as I can get the fabric over it nicely um, and just to get that to stay flat on top of it um, I think that this is gonna work <laughs> I'm really excited so I'm gonna go ahead and um try to slip this in between the two materials and um, basically just sew this in the middle of the two layers of fabric and I got a tan flesh nudie colored it's not the same color as my skin tone but it's close enough I didn't want to get blue or white because this material is quite thin so I figured if anything it would just look like flesh that sounded creepy you get what I'm trying to say okay Gah. okay so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this okay so um I separated the panels I know I taped them together and cut out the pattern in one piece but I decided that was gonna be too hard to try to fit the material over this since it's just the front panel instead of the back panel I'm not I don't think I'm gonna put this in the back panel um, I might have to if um, things don't go according to plan but for the moment my plan is to put just this in the front panel so I have cut the back panel off and I am going to sew just around the edges of the front panel I'm not going to sew the top and then I'm going to slip this in well I'm, I'm gonna sew it and then I'm gonna turn it inside out and then I'm going to flip this in like a pillow in a pillowcase right and or just like how you would make a pillow or any kind of stuffed anything um, and then I will have to tuck in the top like tuck in the two sides towards each other 
and then sew them but um, that way I won't have a seam that's shown on the front panel and even at the top I won't have a seam because a seam I plan to put this um, on the top because most of the Tudor dresses that I've seen have some sort of embellishment and decoration across the top of the bodice C corseted part. So that's my plan for now. I'm probably not going to record it because it's like a whole big thing. It's going to take a long time and yeah, um, but I will report back as normal in just a second. I'm back. So listen. It worked. <laughs> it's inside. So that's really fun. So what I can't decide is should I use the smooth side or the side with that extra piece of fabric on the bottom. Now this was originally a pillowcase. So does it look like a pillowcase or does it look like I just have intent to embroider down there or something I don't know but anyway um so yeah uh, now all I have to do is just <sighs> sew all the other parts on like the sleeves and the actual back part of it um this is the back I'm hoping it's big enough I don't think that it is so we'll see but anyway yeah I want to be done. I'm excited about it and I, I, I'm happy to do it, but I wish that it was already finished. So. Okay, so this is going swimmingly. Um, I think it is going to look very good. Over, I made it a little too big on purpose because I am going to have a corset underneath, so it'll be kind of tight under there. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Either way, so on the sides right here, I did, yes, my my needle and thread are still in here. Also, my room is very messy because I had an Elsa and Ariel party. As you can tell from my makeup, it's kind of crazy. Anyway, so hook and eyes on the sides. Obviously not done with this. Going to add some sleeves and everything. But I may have to tighten it. I don't know. But so far, I'm very pleased. It's extremely straight across. Which is what I wanted. So I know it's going down low and like half my boob is out right now, but I'm I'm gonna do the straps and hopefully have it to right here. Um, we'll see. But I just wanted to show you my progress. So I made the back panel. I did not put foam in the back panel. It's just two pieces of fabric, and then I'm doing the hook and eyes on the side. So we'll see. So I cannot um, take my hand off of this because I can't get it done by myself. So here we are. Um, so as you saw, I put on sleeves and I made this bodice and it worked. And I don't have my hoop skirt underneath here right now. Um, I bunched it up more in the back because I like the bunch up look in the back. Um, I'm having trouble getting the long sleeves attached. <sighs> So, don't know what I'm going to do about that. But, yeah, it's just, like, I feel like, excuse my hair, I feel like the shape looks really good and everything. But, here, I'm going to turn the camera around. Hello. I feel like, let me hold it again. The shape looks good and it's what I intended it to be for the most part. Um, but... I do need to steam it and everything still, but I just, I'm having a hard time with the sleeves. I've seen people make dresses with detachable sleeves like this, but, um, yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't feel like it's going to work out. It's midnight and I'm supposed to be going at 10 o'clock in the morning, which is fine, but I need to take a shower and then wake up and get all my stuff and go to my sister's house and pick her up and then put all the stuff on because girl i can't drive in this so yeah i don't know i'm just i'm having trouble with the sleeves and i'm debating on just not having sleeves but i don't think that's historically accurate and like look at my shift sleeves like 
I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I don't know. So, um, took everything off because it was getting really hot. But I'm hardcore procrastinating about what to do with the sleeves. Except for I need to make a ruffle for the bottom of the sleeve because it's pretty common. So I found these little things that I had um, for the Outlander dress I made. The top um, part of that, it was, you know, from the 80s and I revamped it for everything. Well, th these were underneath or either on top of the shoulder pads for that 80s jacket that I redid. So, where's the other one of these? Seriously, did I lose it? Whatever, I have two of these. So I think I'm going to, this is the detachable sleeve. Let me just show you that real quick. Can't get it all the way on because, well maybe I can't. But anyway, it's just like they did the tie together detachable sleeves. Here's the other one, it was on the floor. But yeah, so, um, but then at the bottom of their sleeves, they would have a ruffle. So I'm going to sew these onto the ends of each sleeve, and then I'm going to worry about attaching it to the top. I think that I can do it. I'm just stressed out and tired and hot, and I have to take a shower, and I keep thinking about how much sleep I'm not going to get. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, um, gonna sew those on right now, and then I think what I'm thinking I'm going to do about the sleeves, I'm gonna put this on backwards real quick, um, is maybe put another ribbon right here, or right here and in the back of the sleeve, and tie them like that, and it's okay that the shift peeks out at the shoulder, I think. I don't know, I... I just want it not only to look good, I don't want to be super uncomfortable, and I don't want the sleeves to fall off. Like, I don't want to have a, mal a wardrobe malfunction while I'm trying to have fun at the Renaissance Fair, you know? So, 